G'day and welcome to City Skylines. We're back in Amity Bay, a modded Let's Play series on my channel. So in the last few videos, we've been moving away from Fairview, Bridgewater and our yet to be named suburb over there and we've been doing regional builds, which I must say have been lots of fun. We've got Clayton here and a regional forestry build behind it. Then over the mountain here, the dam infrastructure we've put in and the little village of Henderson. So I want to stay out in the sticks here and do something with fishing. We have this awesome river that feeds into our dam here and if we take a look at the fishing industry info panel view, lots of different varieties of fish here. Predominantly tuna in the deeper part there, which is a bit weird as it's a salt water fish, but that'll be because it's deep flowing water. The game can't distinguish between salt water and fresh water obviously, it works it out with terrain depths, so shallow or deep water, and then it's whether the water is flowing or stationary, that determines what sort of fish type you'll get. So we have our salmon either side, and I like the idea of that, salmon swimming upstream at certain times of the year, like they do in real life. So I don't normally test build, but we all know what water is like in this game, and right enough, if I flatten the terrain to turn the tuna area into salmon, it absolutely works, no issues there, but the dam completely floods, the dam infrastructure is totally underwater, and that's all fine, we know it goes away after a while, but there's another problem that also surfaced, and that is for some reason, the water level in the lower part of the dam is also affected, and starts off much much lower than it is now. Here's a quick image of me trying this earlier. Do you see that? It's not just a bit, it's half as lower again. So I kept running the game from there and the water then returns to what I thought were normal levels afterwards, but it keeps rising to the point where it then becomes too high. And from there it settles higher than before, so I actually just can't win, and I'm not willing to mess with it to be honest. If it settled back to where it was, fine, I'd go around just fixing what we'd built in this area so it stops flooding, but I really like it the way it looks just now. I love our dam, and I don't want to mess with it for the sake of having salmon in the river instead of tuna. Doesn't really seem like a very smart trade-off there. So we're just going to pretend instead. To be honest, what we could do is even use one of the fish farms as well and pretend that's salmon, because where I'm from in the UK, we do have fish farms further up north, so we're not stretching the truth too far there. <laughs> So I think some kind of fishing build, nothing too big or too modern, we could build another larger facility in the future which we could face out into the open ocean and do a big sort of commercial deep sea fishing type build which could look quite cool. But for this one, let's keep it on a smaller scale. In terms of connections to this area, we know from our dam industry build that we just have one way in and out via this four lane road, and I think now we're going to be pushing it to extend this road up and build even more stuff up here that will then generate even more traffic, particularly if we then have trucks shipping fish goods down the hill. So time to bring a highway connection up here I think, we've got one under Clayton that we just terminated there. I want another one coming from back down here and snaking under our road that runs up to Henderson. Down here is going to be our downtown eventually and I want two major interchanges feeding this as we are going to have a ton of traffic in this whole area out here. Skyscrapers, high density residential, so I think two entry points from the highway would be wise. So today, let's put one of those in, and I think if we go for a windmill interchange, firstly because they look so nice, a work of interchange art right there, but also because we have crisscross access from all four entry points, you can get to any of the other three exits, and that's what we want here. Then I think if we run it up the mountain in a series of tunnels and try not to make it too steep, which it is, so good luck to us there. But we can bring it out to where it will eventually service our oil and ore industry that will sit right up the back there and then terminate as an outside connection off this side of the map giving us three outside connections then instead of just the two which is also a good thing right lots to do so let's get cracking and while i build the highway infrastructure first then kick on with the fishing village let's fast forward
Okay, let's take a look at what we've built here. So, started off with just intending to bring a highway connection up the hill here, but halfway through I thought to myself, well, why not just finish it off properly while we're doing it? So we have a brand new highway now that breaks off from the existing one with a windmill interchange. Then up the hill we go, into a tunnel under the existing road we had that leads up past the dam to Henderson. Now I know we need to respect the terrain, but I think this time the terrain's respecting us because we have blasted our way through this enormous hillside here. So like in previous videos, I've tried to keep away from super unrealistic gradients. The first tunnel tops out at 8.5%, which is pretty steep, but not a gradient I think is too unrealistic here. Then around we go and I've put a parklow interchange here to give us access to this area when we decide to build here in the future. It also gives us handy access to the highway for that road that stretches up past the dam, which is really good too. Then the highway stretches around into this natural kind of valley here, then into another tunnel. Now, this one you have to give me artistic license for, because in real life there is absolutely no way. It would cost so much money, I just can't see it. But in game world, it's not just happening people, it has happened. <laughs> So if I jump into the tunnel view again, check this out. The incline here was so enormous that I thought, how are we gonna do this? I need to loop it around. So I thought, okay, let's do that, but do it as a tunnel. So here we have a two lane highway, double spiral under the mountain. And we're between eight and about 8.3 gradient, unbelievably. So I think we're good. <laughs> Steep, but not insanity. I really want to drive on this in real life. It looks so cool. I mean, it would cost so much money to do, but we're not paying for it, so it's all good. <laughs> then out the top, we're right up the top of the plateau as well here, which is excellent. And if I do a bit of an overhead view here, you can see I've lined these two up as well. So although the tunnel is underneath the mountain, logically you look at that from above and think, oh yeah, okay, that just continues on. Then we have a dumbbell interchange, so we have access to this area as well. Gives us highway connectivity, so we're sorted there too. Then further along here, I put in a shifting trumpet interchange and the reason for that is I wanted to also get that dead end highway connection right down from Clayton up here as well and get it all plugged in and working where we're going to this much trouble to get a highway up here in the first place. So into tunnel view again and this one snakes down the mountain on just over an 8% incline right down to connect in at the bottom there. So now we have that highway sorted as well. Then just towards the end here, I've popped in a Y interchange as one section goes off to an outside connection, giving us that third connection I spoke about earlier. And then we have another connection that we can use in the future if we want to run the highway over the other side of the dam and terminate it somewhere over there. Just gives us that option if we want it. Now zooming into our little yet to be named village here, Pop a suggestion in the comments below if you have one by the way. We started out with the generic fishing harbour as that's all we have unlocked just now. And the plan here will be to detail this out with some older rundown jetties as if that's what was originally used back in the day. But now more modern facilities have replaced them and that's why we have this one with the concrete pier on it. I've put a little vanilla abandoned jetty here too. I love these. So we'll incorporate that into the detailing when we come to that in a minute. 
I've also kept the dirt roads here as a nod to times gone by, almost like the town hasn't upgraded these yet like the rest of the town behind it. I've added a fish farm as well, carefully placing that so our boats don't ram right through it, and that will hopefully bolster the fish stocks as I've placed a fish factory behind there as well. A little generic industry, just to give us that cargo fishy packaging industry vibe. Police, fire, health and death care sorted, as well as education. Then up the back here, I put a little housing estate here using the European Suburbia CCP. This has less village vibes, but I wanted to bolster the residential here, so we had people to work in the fishing industry. And I built this in such a way that it looks like the beginning of a suburban expansion to this little village. Almost like developers came in and have started to put proper housing in. Then right around the front here, a little more industry. And some commercial. And then these super little European suburbia CCP houses that look like little cabins. We've used them before in Clayton for our forestry build and I think they really fit in nicely here too. You can imagine that back a century ago there would have only been a handful when the first fishermen began harvesting the river here. And as time has gone on more and more sprang up then a little commercial strip followed then as we move into present day, the fishing is a bit more commercialized now, with the canning factory and things like that, warranting more housing, suburban expansion, and then some factories as well. And there we have it. So now it's time to detail it up, as it's looking a little plain at the minute. So I think we can bring it to life. So let's see what we can do.
Rightio, let's see how the finished build turned out here. So starting at the back here with our little suburb, just greenery, fixing up the hedges on the houses so they all join up properly and look cohesive. Lots and lots of heavy trees here, as I wanted to give that feeling that this is really in the middle of the countryside, in the middle of nowhere, and quite heavily forested. A little sculpture in the roundabout there. I tried looking for a fish related one on the workshop, but no such luck. But I really like this one from the plazas and promenades DLC, then just a bit of grass and undergrowth there. The usual treatment for our industrial assets here, decals and industrial props. Same for the fish factory, just a few trucks at the loading bay there, which I think look quite nice. Then around to the front here, again like we've done previously with these tiny cabin houses, I haven't delineated the gardens or anything. I think these at the front would have all sprung up originally and likely not had subdivided land, and I think that works. Then there's commercial assets along the middle there, including the Catfish Cafe, <laughs> had to add that in. Along the waterfront here, just a mass of rocks and overgrowth, big rocks on the left, picking up cues from further down the dam where we put the dam infrastructure in, then smaller ones along here. A formal rock retaining wall behind, which I think frames it really nicely, but then really wild in the front. Then these superb jetty assets from McCluck give that sort of abandoned vibe to the waterfront here. Then around the corner to our fish farm, a few boating and fish related props, some dirt decals for the road, a few containers and forklifts, and little boat trailers. Then repeating the sort of formal retained wall down here on the water's edge amongst the wilder rocks and overgrowth. Then we've got the abandoned jetty here, concrete keys by Ivania next to our fish harbour, a boat crane, then some boat props from the workshop that are up on stilts like they've been abandoned with time. Some fishing boat props on the water here too, bringing back their catch of the day. Then more props over this side, I found these super little fishing related props on the workshop by I'm Harold Ramis, and they're fishing nets and buoys, they look pretty cool, and fish related props from Ivania as well. Then over this side, I left this part really wild. Some old rundown abandoned jetties here by Kenneth Edra. All these are in my asset list on the workshop, so check out the link below if you fancy adding any of them to your builds. And I've deliberately sunk them like parts of them are underwater. Then lots of grass and undergrowth here, with a path meandering through, and then we finish up at the second fish farm here, and that's us. So I think it turned out really nice, a little fishing village with a nod to the times gone by when they'd used the now abandoned jetties to fish from, then more modern fishing practices have taken over but we've kept it quite small and not too heavily commercialised. Then this little village that sits behind it, I've left it marked TBC so if you have a name suggestion then drop it in the comments below or just let me know what you think of the build. Well that's it for this video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. If you're on Discord, jump over to my Discord community and say good day. And until next time, take care, have a great day, and thanks again for watching.